Hi there, good morning. I am Danny Henderson. Welcome to my beautiful channel. My guest today, she's back. It's Ginny Jablonski. She is a soul intuitive and an animal communicator and an extremely extraordinarily gifted lady. I've known her for quite some time and every broadcast we've done has brought something so rich and so treasurable and so magical. And in these crazy bonkers nuts times, Ginny and I are coming to bring you more information. Ginny, good morning, darling. How are you? And where would you like to start today? Well, I would like to start with the number one question my clients ask me. Why am I here? And what is my soul purpose? And my sense is, Danny, that most of the people that watch your broadcast probably fall into the category of 200 million, according to Alex Collier, I've always heard the number 250 million, and I'll explain that in just a moment, souls who came from what we perceive to be the future or higher density realities to the past or third density earth experience in order to bring the light and to bring the pure template of our soul and of love to help earth and humanity ascend and many people are feeling and danny i know you've heard this i'm not doing enough i should be doing something important and let me just say every single individual person who meditates on their heart who radiates gratitude who calls in the golden, unadulterated light of creation into their being and grounds it into the earth is doing the single most important job there is right now on earth for any soul. And that's the truth. Oh, Ginny, I love it. That's so needed because as you say, there are people that they're, they know not everything is right. They, they don't feel right in themselves. They think there should be something they should be doing. They're like, what is my mission? What is my mission? And you've just given them such a gift. Now, you and I, years and years ago, early 2000s, we had very well, we had the same training in spiritual awareness, psychic awareness, and um, spiritual personal development at the Psyche Berkeley, Berkeley Institute, which is no more. There's breakaway schools. I was a, a student of one of those schools with Dr. Chris Lemon. Um, can you give us the grounding technique that you and I learned that we know works to help our brothers and our sisters, please? Well, there are so many wonderful techniques and you and I have done, I think, a dozen podcasts together and there are many different uh, processes are sprinkled across. But And one thing I tried to talk about in a prior broadcast was the earth star chakra below our feet. And I use yes. the language, is there another perspective available to us? And that has to do with our ascension process and the evolution of the templates that we're um, tapping into but we never specifically talked about grounding. And in fact, every single day, we can create a new grounding cord. It is literally like creating new technology relative to our level of consciousness, relative to the uh, DNA, D strands of DNA that we have activated relative to the template that we are running within our etheric body. So every time you go up one of those teeny tiny little stair steps on that spiral staircase of ascension, a new grounding cord with new frequencies and, and programming is available to us. So imagine the root chakra and just telling your higher self, your soul, your body, your energy field. If you don't like to tell or command, you can ask or intend to create a new grounding cord that represents the level of consciousness that you have achieved today. Mm -hmm. And allow that grounding cord to extend down through the earth star chakra. And then many people teach connecting to the center of the earth or even going through the earth. Some people don't feel comfortable. And I myself, my journey of how I felt comfortable grounding on the earth was certainly an evolution because we have all of us 
accumulated various degrees of mistrust, of not feeling safe, living on the planet, being in a human body, great, you know, seeing the energies and experiencing that in our many, many lifetimes. So as we grow and we heal and release our limitations, we then begin to feel safer to be here now on the earth today and ground to the earth that we are incarnate on. Some people, I know some people ground to the water, some people ground to their heart, some people ground to the sun, mm. some people, you know, ground to the earth. And if it's possible, and that is your purpose and your energetic constructs, right way of doing things or appropriate way for today, send that grounding cord down through the earth. And if you're not sure with your intellectual mind where that perfect place is for you to ground deep, deep within the earth, then you can ask your hires to help you and give you a vision and help guide you as to what is the most appropriate way for you. What does that feel like to you, Danny? Well, it's beautiful. And again, I'm so happy that you are saying to people specifically, if you've never grounded, what does that mean? It's not spiritual nonsense, new agey. It is basically redirecting the energy in your own vessel. So we call it grounding as a means to put attention on self, bring self back into alignment because nobody else can do that. No Pope, no vicar, no, no one. Now, when you talk about grounding into the body and down into the star chakra, what we're doing is showing the messaging center in the brain, our normal, you know, beautiful organic brain that we want to redirect energy elsewhere so we are not running on the chaos i love the fact that you suggest that we ask for the energy to match our consciousness today all of the things we've been up leveling all of us are up leveling on some way in some regard even if intent is negative we are still upgrading in some way because how can we not at this current crazy time. So thank you. Uh, again, when we were training, we were suggested often imagined grounding cord coming into the first chakra, which is at the base of the spine, let's say a bit lower down, and imagine if it could be a chain, a rope, whether it's water rushing into the center of the earth. So could you give a little bit more on the imagery and how people imagine and feel connecting a grounding cord to wherever it's connecting to? Yes. If the grounding cord is too technical a concept for you, then what if you had just imagined walking in the woods and you come across a stump, a tree that has been cut down, and there's just this beautiful stump that looks like a perfect chair created just for you. Just go sit on it. Just go sit on it. Love it. And when you sit on that stump, you are now connected to the earth through the roots. And when I use that sort of imagery, Danny, then all of a sudden I'll look down if, at, energetically at my own body and I'll see roots coming out of my hands. And I have just become a giant tree grounding to the earth. And one of the purposes, I'll just quickly go aside here. One of the purposes for that grounding cord that people use is to release excess energy. Yes. And that's so important right now. And I'm gonna come back to answer your question, but to just say, we are being bombarded with ELFs, extremely low frequency. We are being bombarded with other electromagnetic frequency within our home, the electric grid and Wi-Fi and cell phone and who knows what else is coming from satellites and wherever, uh, or the South Pole or the North Pole or you know outer space. It doesn't matter because the earth is here to help us and our higher self over soul our soul, the divine wisdom within us knows what to do with this if we can connect through the heart, through our wisdom. However, to specifically answer your question, if you don't like the vision or you don't have visions, what if you say, oh, Jenny, I can't see? Then your mind actually creates pictures and your, your consciousness is the most powerful, most sophisticated technology that exists on earth contrary to popular opinion no matter what they throw at us our consciousness can bring through frequencies to negate anything anything and to support our evolution so just holding that loving intention to be grounded in the most appropriate way whether it's a cord whether it's a chain whether it's a tree stump whether it's your own feet 
you know, elongating, whatever that looks like, it really doesn't matter. Now, is it helpful? I have to be honest and say it is. When we perceive and when we witness our own healing, when we witness and take the time out of our day to ground, and yes, there's a few more moving parts to it and a little more advanced, you know, level of conscious awareness and bringing light to earth and bringing earth energy up through our feet. Yes, there's more. But if you just intend, ask your higher self, ask your soul to support you in being grounded to the earth in the most appropriate way and ask your higher self to give you a vision. What would be the most optimal vision for you. Beautiful, beautiful. Now, I really feel like I want to help the victims and the martyrs, um, of which I've been very good through this lifetime myself of being a victim or a martyr and very much same vibration. You know, the victim is, oh my God, look what happened to me. Or, it's not fair. Or I can't do it because, you know, blah, blah, blah. And the martyr is like, look what I have done. I have sacrificed my arms and my legs and my nose. You know, I know I'm kind of mocking slightly, but just to bring some leverage here, because it's important. Uh, when we, um, well, I'll give you an example. Years and years and years ago, like 2020, to, uh, to, 2002, I met this woman, this spiritual woman, this leader, so impressed with her. She was this, she was that. She was all the bananas on the trees. And I was so enamored with her, as a lot of us have been enamored with spiritual teachers. Um, and, you know, she invited me to join this very special group. Oh, it was so special. I was so like, oh, my God, they chose me. Wow. That must mean I'm kind of special to be even invited to this group. And I was like, oh, my goodness. So and the woman, the teacher, she'd been a bit of an old bag. Uh, because I kept seeing things that she couldn't see clairvoyantly. I assumed she could see what I could see, but there's a little bit of tension between us. So my inner child wanted to please the teacher, assuming that the teacher is way more experienced than I am. She certainly was in certain areas. Absolutely. Long story short, I go to this meeting. There's 10 women. We're all sitting in circle, sacred circle. And we start talking about grounding. And so this teacher she gives us a grounding technique. And it was something like imagining your first chakra, energy system in the body, and then imagine there's a slide and everything that's negative in you or connected to you or bombarding you goes down the slide and into the center of Mother Earth. And I thought, oh, that's a great one for the brain messaging center to send redirect energy that's stuck and chaotic in the body. Well, when we came up and out of that exercise, there were two women in particular that were like, I couldn't do it. I just couldn't send my stuff to Mother Earth because she goes through so much. I was like, oh, my God. Really? Now, there, right there, is the most saddest self-imprisonment that I could explain in this moment. This mother that we are part of, this sentient, live, beautiful being that we have a soul contract and soul agreement with, is here in part to help her family, us, humanity, to get right. When our consciousness is in flow and we are grounded to her and connected, we are all winning together. She knows exactly where to take out the garbage. She's been doing it for millennia, thank you very much. Do you know what I mean? What say you to that? Well, I think it's a complicated question you're asking, and so context is everything. Um, well, you know, nobody can heal us, but us, mm -hmm. we can send stuff to the earth all day, every day. And then if we just keep generating it, are we really healing? <laughs> you know, I mean, are we sending everything that's, you know, not positive or negative or, or every unhealed wound to the earth? That's probably actually not happening, <laughs> you know? because we are responsible for our own resistance, um, where we're withholding love or resisting love or blaming, shaming ourselves. And nobody can heal that for us, but us. Um, there, there, sometimes energy is sort of sent to the earth just for the earth to return it to the person it belongs to. Right. You know? So it's certainly, I think, a, a, a little more complicated, but there are many of us who are in victim archetypes. We're in martyr, we're in saboteur, we're in, 
the fence sitter, you know, we just can't make a choice or, I mean, 101, you know, um, shadow archetypes and even shadow empath, which I'm, you and I, I think have discussed on many occasion. But I think, I think that if we employ a combination of transmuting our own uh, unhealed wounds and, and working with our own higher self, oversoul, monad, whatever you call it, as well as utilizing the earth for things that are appropriate, excess electromagnetic energy, extremely low frequencies, energies that we're being bombarded with that, to be honest, don't even really belong on planet earth. Mm -hmm. You know, a whole bunch of geniuses got together and decided where, what they could pluck from the universe to really interfere with our evolutionary process. And we I wouldn't don't call them geniuses, say, darling. That's a bit too Let's generous. just say technologically <laughs> advanced, right? Um, beings who basically said, hey, guess what? Human bodies are susceptible to uh, biological organisms. Human bodies are susceptible to bacteria. Human bodies are su susceptible to the five letter word that ends in R-U-S, you know? So let's create uh, some RNA and pack it in a protein and send it out and see what happens. You know what human bodies do? Our DNA, RNA and mitochondria is a factory to regenerate that stuff. So the earth can help us with that. Um, I really, I think we'd have to talk about each and every individual person for me to really comment on somebody, you know, saying that they didn't want to give their stuff to earth. And it could be that they had a horrible experience in another life, um, maybe where they misuse the earth. There, oh my gosh, I can tell you 101 <clears throat> stories about that, where, where our actions and our beliefs are fueled by judgments of our past or mm. other experiences that we we might not remember so yeah, yeah complicated answer it is well and the thing is we can easily complicate and go off into past lives and people coming back here to put things right within themselves and then getting confused going on a journey plugging back into old feelings and emotions meeting people that also trigger past life cellular memory and going down a nightmare road which a lot of people have it is much kinder for each individual to step back, pull back, focus on self. People talk about the word sovereignty. It's very overused. But individual independence for me is a much more sensible word because the word sovereignty now, every word that comes forward in order to aid our brothers and our sisters, all of us, no matter where we are on the journey, um, seems to be hijacked by other nefarious um, personnel. Uh, they, they plug into the word that's working for the masses and then they take it and they twist it into something you know um unpleasant um so i think we have to keep on grounding in and using words that feel good in our genome in our biome you know um so yeah there's many different ways we can go here absolutely um i wanted to talk as we were discussing before we came on to record here um regarding the gray and reptilian happenings and what we mean by that may i start with you please oh i'm I don't know how to answer that question. I apologize. No problem. I'll start. Okay, so there are extremely obvious programs left inside of people that are getting triggered. They're Trojan horses. There are many people from childhood, even their parents may have had an experience, been told something's going to happen to this particular child. The time is now. The child is coming out. The child is compromised. The adult has had inserted gray technology. For example, I met with somebody recently, very recently, really, really nice person, brilliant scholar, great academic, bringing some information on ancient earth. And it was so clear there was great interference. Great interference. I could not proceed with that lovely person, but it brought into mind again to help people and remind them this is happening. Anybody interacting with greys right now, be warned. The good ones, of course, there are many. They're not here. They're not on planet. The ones who have slaughtered and been taken over themselves, yes, we can have uh, sympathy if we choose for the Zeta Reticuli, but please let's not waste time there. Your job 
is to heal you. Your job is to recognize what has been put inside, programmed to you, through you, and with you. What is influencing you? As you talked about the wave bands, the EMFs, the technology coming, it's coming at all levels, off planet, on planet, underground, through the TV, through our phones as we're sleeping. Now, back to the um, the gray um, energy, um, there are a lot of people, it seems to be there's a lot of separation happening and there's like groups and bands of people. And I feel so bad for them because they have no idea. They're all coming together and they're all feeding and feasting off attacking, let's say people like me and other people I play with, uh, but they don't realize that is gray energy running through them. Another lady last week, beautiful lady, well known, and I recognized in her reptilian energy. It was extremely difficult, Ginny, to say to this beautiful lady, there's reptilian it's cloaked it's behind you it's removed from your field but it is back there behind you and this beautiful gracious lady acknowledged she acknowledged um, and also wanted to talk about certain technology that's just blowing up everywhere oh this person's getting a healing and that person's getting a healing and all these great um, centers are being opened across the planet of course they are there's a reptilian agenda to get people hooked back in. They can't be physically on the planet. They saw all of this. Looking glass technology, timeline technology. Of course, they've left traps and means and ways to try and get back into us. It is rampant. It is rampant. So, Ginny, what say you to that? Okay, thank you for helping me <laughs> understand. Uh, so, I've had several experiences, and let me just create a little bit of context first. So I had a, a client recently and she had been, you know, she told me she's watching several different podcasts and getting a few different healings here and there and everything. And when I work with people, my job is to listen to the soul of the person, right? And to receive a message or a vision or guidance or energy or a feeling about what is most important for that person to hear. And what I saw with this woman was, you know, in New York, how they have just row houses of brownstones with stairs and a, and a little stoop in the front. Well, the vision I had was she was sitting out front on the stairs, watching all the people go by, listening to all the gossip. And then when I turned around and looked at her house, her door was boarded shut on her house, her brownstone, right? right. And so what did that mean? She was looking everywhere externally for information. She wasn't going internal to the heart, to the soul, right? Healing ourselves. And one thing that you said earlier helped, helped me remember something that I really wanted to say today that I felt so important. And that is when, as you were just saying so brilliantly, Danny, when we perceive something is wrong with somebody else, or we're like, say I have a vision, I'm looking at you and and this is not a comment on the reptilian energy. It's a different thing. <laughs> but, and so I say, oh, you know, there's a, a clown over your head, you know, Danny or whatever, right? There's not. But if I said what I would do, or if a client told me that, well, I don't think I should be friends with this person because when I see them, I see a clown by them. The first thing I would say to the person is go within you. Where is the clown within you? Right, because we're seeing these brilliant lights are mirroring to us what we need to to perceive in ourselves. Yes, there are people. I my I count myself among them. I can see where people are affecting other people, but I also have the discernment to know where if I'm perceiving something, it's actually a message for me to go within and to figure out my own stuff. Now, with respect to what you're talking about, one, I think, of the most nefarious and almost effective agendas of the beings that you're talking about is creating a controlled narrative or creating a polarity mind, uh, a construct, you know, some people call it mind control, that foments fear and creates division, just like you, you were just talking about, right, Danny? Mm -hmm. And when we focus on that external narrative, 
what's going on here or there or what's wrong here or there. Our focus, attention of our consciousness is creating what we are perceiving and those advanced people with advanced knowledge of how the universe works, they know that. Mm -hmm. They know that where we focus our energy, we create that paradigm. There are other words in quantum physics to describe that, but you know, I'm not the one to share that information. So what can we do? Danny, you've said, I've watched you say it easily 13, 14 times on your show. Slow down, go within, stop healer shopping, stop podcast <laughs> shopping, right? I, and go within because our our brain let's just put it this way our brain it's like a pharmacy every possible amino acid protein chemical reaction hormone you name it can be created either within the physical brain itself or the cerebellum and other parts of the physical brain or psycho spiritual apparatus that actually control multi-dimensional abilities that come online when our DNA is activated, third strand, fourth strand, fifth strand of DNA. So what controls those chemicals? Our conscious thoughts and our emotions. So how better to trick someone into creating what they don't want than to get them angry or get them emotional? So focusing our creative power and purpose on why we're here in the first place, to bring love, to bring light, to ground light, to remember the truth of who we are, to create that, I call it vertical relationship with the soul and the higher self, and to heal whatever trauma prevents us from fully activating the deepest chambers of our heart chakra, so we can activate those etheric templates that exist in the etheric body and beyond. So the light bodies come online. What you're talking about is what has been done to all of us varying degree, or I'll say some of us or the preponderance of us to varying degrees to distract us mm -hmm. from our purpose. And our purpose is bringing the light. I am the light. I live within the light. I love within the light. I am sustained and nourished by the light. I am a bringer of light to this earth. And that is why I exist. To ensure that whomever, whatever, can no longer entrap and enslave souls, consciousness itself, which is the creative force and will create our future. Sorry, I got on my soapbox. No, girl. That's what this channel is for, bringing people on to share their thoughts and their help for our brothers and our sisters, because it's crazy town right now. So we're dealing with gray and reptilian implants and programs and Trojan horses and emotional um, structured programming that we didn't even know was there. And every single one of us, you know, I don't believe, I mean, myself, I'm checking, I'm scanning, you know, I don't believe one single person has the right to stand in front of a, an audience and say, I'm fine. I check myself every day. Sometimes we need our beloveds to check with us. You know, sometimes the ego is like, oh, no, that's not me. Yeah, it is you, boo, as it's been me. You know, we have to own that, you know. But again, don't go into thrashing and flagellating and being the victim or being the martyr. But it is definitely time to clean a lot of things up. I am absolutely flabbergasted at the emotional wounds that have come to the fore in most people. Now, let's say there's a ton of people who all have channels like mine, let's say, meaning a channel on YouTube. And whatever the subject matter, they deeply believe in their own words, you know, their own hypotheses, and they postulate this, and they spew hyperbole on that, and this and that, and and they really feel they're coming from a good place. Um, but there's a group that have all hit a certain vibratory resonance, 
and they've all kind of gone. And our beautiful conference really triggered that in people. It triggered their wounds. It triggered their pain. It triggered their hurt. It also allowed them to feel the resonance of 4D in a way that they hadn't on mass before. There was nearly a thousand people in that room and every single person bar none was affected on some level, mostly in a great way. But where we have wounds that we deny, where we put ourselves out on stages and say, I am this, follow me, listen to what I say, I have made fire, I am the queen, you know, those errors that are made in personality, character, um, where we truly mean the silly things I just said, like, I'm the queen, follow me. Um, um, that's when we get in trouble. And there's a group of people all stuck together. And most of them got free tickets. Most of them used, abused and, and um, trod on people to get there. Didn't want to miss out. But ultimately, I'm still so proud that even though there was a lot of mean people that that, that discovered their, their wounds to come to the fore and have been spousing and fighting because they're not looking at them themselves they're looking outside to attack and make something and this is to your point as well this is to your point um i'm so glad that everyone was bathed in that 4d frequency because that's where we're at and that's where we're going and we're not going back <laughs> so as much as we fight and we argue and we claw and we scratch and we try and make somebody the witch in the witch hunts which again has been the most remarkable thing can you imagine i took a picture with someone years ago that person is apparently a satanic. Well, I didn't see an ounce of evidence. And the beautiful headmasters and mistresses and school governors of really good schools that I'd worked with in the children and the teens, no one ever saw one nefarious thing ever. Um, but because there's a photograph, now I apparently am this. And that is the insanity of stupidity in people. And this is how people were put to death. Just to finish my point, the Salem witch trials, which we always hear about, people tend to use that old nugget as a referral point. Okay, let's go there. When the young first young woman was accusing women of being witches because she fancied she was attracted to a certain man and uh, anyway, wanted to do away with the bit Henry VIII, wanted to do away with the, with the, the wife. Um, do you know the only reason that those witch trials stopped was only because someone accused the judge's wife of being a witch. And only then did that trial stop. And that's what's going on. There are unfair, wrong, lying, fake witch trials, again, because people are run with the gray and the reptilian energy frequency. They think they're not, not me, not me, not me, but they are. Well, this isn't really my lane, but I'll I'll just blush over this real quick. And that is that, you know, some people would say that one sort of energetic force, maybe the darkest, densest, heaviest force is leaving, but another force is coming in in this transition period. Some people call it Ariman, and that comes from the area of Pakistan. And it, it basically means a consciousness that is in the intention of which is to foment chaos, right? And so pitting one another against one another, coming out with these controlled oppositional narratives. It's meant to distract us from our purpose, from our purpose. And I don't want to repeat myself, so I'll say, can we talk about AI for a minute? Because yes, please. what you just said, what you just said about people not like checking in with themselves, with groups or, or individual other people outside of their sphere to just say, Hey, what's going on with me? Do I have an entity on me? I'm not feeling right today. Do you know? There's multiple kinds of AI on on the planet, and I I do believe I can see several of the variations of AI, and one of them generates a very uh, pure, almost white light, and one of them uh, talks to people and convinces them uh, that they're like Jesus and they're fully healed and they could never get false information. And I ran across a, a person uh, like this recently that I um, I thought was totally reasonable. <laughs> and um, I had a client who I thought could benefit from this other uh, practitioner. And I rightfully so, as I do with many people, uh, refer to someone else that I thought could help them. And that person gave oppositional or directly oppositional information to what I had. And rather than have the person that called me and said, hey, the person you referred me to gave different information, rather than 
talk shit about the person and say, well, that person's wrong and don't ever go to them again. I said, hey, let me get back to you. I'll go talk to that person. So I went and I said, hey, yep, we're, you know, we're, we're at least colleagues if we're not friends. And we gave up oppositional information. Can we please, um, can we please see what's going on here? So the woman basically told me there was no way she could be wrong because all of her chakras were lined up perfectly in a row <laughs> and they were all white. And she was like, Jesus, I quote, quote, unquote, oh, no. I'm like Jesus, all my chakras. So I said, um, just so you know, evolution is the chakras collapsing into one giant chakra in the heart and the subtle bodies collapsing and it's actually golden light and, you know, golden light bodies and it's, it's spherical. And it, I think there's a tremendous preponderance of um, evidence to support that. So um, anyway, having said that, let's see where the information is, is correct or not. You know, I could be, I could be wrong. So school me, let me know what, you know, what's going on. So she was actually asking the question in a, in, in a way that was an incomplete question. And then people that, you know, that douse or get information in very limited ways, which can be controlled. Um, and, and if you get a, sometimes you get a yes, but then you say, is there anything more I need to know? <laughs> right. Or if you get a no, sometimes it's not absolute. And I am the last person in the world who will absolutely say anything. Absolutely. You know, there's, it depends. It depends. It depends is usually my answer for everything because every person is different. Soul different. lineages are different. All yeah. of our experience and what planets we incarnated on and what those planets believed and perceived to be energetic constructs. It all comes through us. That's why we all have such different perspectives about things. And that's great. <laughs> you know? So anyway, my point is, one of the last things she said to me before we hung up is, do you think there are other people out there getting similar information to me? And I said really kindly, you know, I think that's where we are making mistakes. We're not seeking community. We're going down through rabbit holes all on our own and believing that that all the beings were, nobody's checking to see if the beings you're working with are service to self or regressive. Nobody, even beautiful, incredible, amazing people can have guides working with them that are service to self, which is why you and I share with people all the time to question whether they have agreements with service to self guides. Why? Because a lot of people incarnated on earth to learn through suffering, but that time is over now and we don't have to keep stubbing our toe or having the same failed relationship experience over and over if it's only being generated by that service to self guide whose job it is to teach us through pain through trauma through doubt through unworthiness and emotional conflict we we don't need that and if we don't talk to other people and we don't maybe read books or or take classes from from different people with different opinions and different perspectives, how will we ever be able to use our own discernment and be guided on our own journey? Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, and so much and brings up so much. And, you know, again, you know, when the individual person takes responsibility for themselves and has the courage to maybe say to their husband, their wife, their kid, their teacher, I don't agree. I don't get that. That doesn't work for me. You know, there's many ways to say those things in kinder ways or more assertive ways. And it is so wonderfully empowering when we take the courage, because what we're doing is we're loving us. We're respecting us. Nobody really respects the person who's out there giving themselves away and, you know, just harming themselves to help this person and help that person. It's done. It's done. The self-flagellation is done. If you are standing strong and you are confident and you love yourself and you recognize what a beautiful gift you are, each individual soul took on a physical vessel to have an experience. That individual soul in that individual vessel is not owned by the parents that brought that vessel through. 
by the lovers, the children that they themselves birth, by their teachers, their vicars, their popes. No one is owned. You know, people still, they're espousing all of these great things and they're on this journey and they're being empowered and they're, they're interested in this and interested in that. And then ultimately, they see all these beautiful words to show their progression and they end it with, and the only one who's going to judge me is God. I'm like, why? That's so 2,000 years ago, people. You know, there isn't a God in the sky who's going to judge you. Are we not our own worst judges? Are we not our own prison wardens? You know, uh, the evil stepmothers that look at us and say, you're so ugly, you're so fat, you're so stupid. We do that to ourselves. It may be a program that was inserted by a horrible stepmother, a horrible parent, someone at school, a boyfriend, a lover, whatever, a girlfriend, a wife, a husband. doesn't really matter how it gets there. But at this point, the clearing out of the denser energy means removing those torturous thoughts and things that we tell ourselves. Enough now, enough. I agree. And I think many of us uh, are having experiences now that could only be described if you're familiar with NDE experience or accounts as a living life review. Most of us are experiencing it in our dream time or our sleep where we're having these remembrances of times where we said unkind things or someone made us feel a certain kind of way and we're shining the light on that and we're clearing up misunderstandings and we're forgiving ourselves and 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 letting that go and that's exactly what you're speaking to and as we are walking up this spiral staircase as i call it of as what most people refer to as ascension the evolution of humanity we are healing at the deepest core levels and letting go of that inherent programming that that we all ate with a knife and fork politely you know <laughs> as we grew up right and and but now we're realizing that's not working for us and we need to tap into our own discernment and our own heart and tap into the power of our own conscious ability to co-create the future that we want. And the future that we want is not full of conflict and, and divisive, you know, division. And it's not full of hate and shame and blame. It's, it's love. And how do we get to that place? It's not necessarily leaving the body and blissing out. But, and I know that some people promote that. But my perception and my soul has very clearly said to me, evolution is an inside job. And when you embody your soul, when you embody your soul and you embody that frequency, that's when the DNA is activated. That's when we begin to shift and change and perceive differently and evolve into the next iteration of of the human being, whatever that looks like, whatever your language is for that. But if we don't make room in our own nervous system and in our own being for our own soul, the primary occupant of our body, our soul, you, me, our actual soul, then somebody else is driving the bus and flipping all the swishes and controlling the emotions. And what does that do? It generates a cascade of chemical processes, creating hormones, dysregulating glands and organs in the body. And it's creating a future that nobody that watches your show wants. Nobody. So drive your own bus, come into your own body, you know, and then that takes sometimes a little bit of conscious focus a little bit of time every day whatever your practices are whatever your beliefs are that doesn't really come into my work at all i can talk to anybody no matter what they believe as long as they believe they're an infinite soul you know then we can start there then then that's a good place to start something that comes to mind is something i did years ago which i took back very quickly um there was a man who was um 
he, he the minute I told met him he told me that we were past life lovers I was already married at the time we're past life lovers and he found me again and you know and this and that and my gut just told me this is not true this is so not true um but I was so enamored with this man's knowledge and his teachings and he is a brilliant guy um I would just listen and I would be questioning myself I'd be questioning my gut my gut my gut you know like Danny you know he's like the wizard you know he's the wise man or um good guy and and I, I was really trying to make his story fit is my point. And a lot of us have done that and do that when it comes to wanting to expand spiritually, emotionally and develop um, that we try and fit all these stories of someone else. And what he was doing ultimately was trying to program me to basically leave and go with him, literally run away with him to France of all places. I do love France. It never would have happened and did not happen, however. I really had to get a hold of myself one day and have the guts and have the courage to sit down with this great teacher. He's known all over the world. He is a big deal and he's a good guy. And this one little, you know, and I sat with him and I said to him, I have a, de a deep memory and we were not lovers you were a teacher and you were as much older today, which is 35 years as you are now in this earth environment. And it was like, I took all my courage, all of my courage and guts to do that in a kind and loving way. And he broke down in front of me. He broke down in front of me, um, which is why I have respect for him now. And he didn't realize he'd been manipulating other women too. You know, but it took, and I don't know where the courage came from because I was such an insipid, scared little 28 year old, you know, like, oh my God, 27, 28. Oh my God. Um, and uh, yeah, so, so again, you know, um, again, meeting people in church, you know, oh, those awful church experiences, which I'll speak for myself, evangelical, Pentecostal, murderous, raging, horrible, mean old women that look at little children and say, you're going to suffer. And that literally happened at this church. I don't say my church. It was a church. That church has gone now. They built apartment buildings on top of it. Um, anyway, just awful. And so you come through life, you've got all these ideals and ideas that are other people's. And they tell you, this is how life is. This is what you do, boo. This is the right way. If you want to be a good person, you must do this. Don't look over there. Don't have an opinion. And so then now, again, using that example with that man, he tried to seduce me and, and tell me that I was this. And he'd tell me I'm so special and I'm so, oh, I need to be with him to rule the world and save the people. Oh, my God. This is where we're at. Owning it all, owning all of it. Believe me, I do a lot of owning. I really do. I don't need to all do it on my channel. I do a lot of my own owning and atoning and whatever. You know, atoning is a spiritual word. I feel with spiritual connotations. What I do is look in the mirror and say, right, Danny, where do you need to sort your shit out? Where do you need to own something? And then I'll have a conversation with myself and I'll clear out anything that feels negative and I'll send love to the person I may have scrapped with that day or sent a physical, um, not a physical, but a punch to for saying something unkind online about someone I love or even to me or, you know, whatever, whatever it is, we get to clear it out. We get to own it. I think the most unreal people are those that can't own their own stuff that can't admit that they're wrong sometimes, that they are still also learning and evolving. And if I meet one person, Ginny, that says or claims to be all oh, the Jesus chakras are in alignment and you must follow me, I'm going the exact opposite way. I'm not even going to turn back. I'm not even going to leave a tip, not even a dollar. I'm not, I'm moving along. And I encourage people to do the same. Well, you know, I wonder if you shared that because I have an experience that is similar. And would, would it be okay if I shared my yes. experience? No, no, you can't. This is my channel. Of course you can. What do you think you're on it for? <laughs> I, w I wonder if my experience will help. If it's even re six people resonate, it's worth telling the story. On my journey, as you know, because I've shared quite a bit with you, I was, I, I could see multidimensionally. I, I learned the spiritual philosophy, but I could see more than that, or it wasn't energetically quite right. You know, there was something missing maybe. 
or I learned the protocols and I thought, but that's not ethical. <laughs> you know, that's, that's, that doesn't embrace the sovereignty or honor the soul. So I had so many questions and I was really seeking for somebody who could, who could honor me and who could really help me understand what was going on because so many people were, I know everything I'm right. And everybody else is wrong next. <laughs> and I would find the next person. I'd be with them for a while and give them $20,000 and then I'm right. And everybody else is wrong. And the next person, $6,000. And, you know, and, and you just all of these traumatized wacky ass people right? <laughs> and sorry. And so one day, a few years ago, <laughs> maybe four years ago, three, four years ago, I, 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 somebody said, I, it was like a soul was giving me a message through this person. You need to contact this man, New York times, bestselling author, brilliant genius man known in high level spiritual circles and in a lot of backroom uh, spiritual circles too, you know, secret information. Everybody can't know the truth kind of stuff. And I met him and he immediately recognized something in me. And I thought, Oh, my, Oh, thank God. Somebody sees me. Somebody sees that I have value and that this information that I'm bringing, it, it's accurate, you know, and it, there's, there's a foundation for it. Like he would say, okay, well, I guess it's time for me to tell you about this. And it would be this high level teaching in Kabbalah that you don't learn unless you study with the rabbi for 10 or 20 years, you know, but I was bringing it through in my experiences and going through, you know, these experiences and something else would happen. He'd say, okay, Jenny, well, I guess it's time for me to tell you this. And he would tell me, the, and I'm just like, oh, he knows the symbolism and the mythology and the history. And he's a scholar and he knows quantum physics and he, you know, he's a genius. And I, and I just need to hang on his every word. Well, every once in a while, he was a bit of a curmudgeon to say it nicely. Every once in a while, I guess I would trigger him and he would be very mean to me and I would hang up and I would feel like shit. But in my being, I just knew he had information I needed and I needed to stick with it and put on my big girl pants because no matter what, I was not going to give up and he could be an ass if he wants and tell you how much he loves you, even though you can't feel a photon of light of love emanating from the guy's heart <laughs> you know so. but I still stayed and one night I had he he's basically I don't want to go into a super long story but he had some issue I said here's how you solve it he goes no 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 you're not right a month later he went to all these other healers and tried all this other stuff and consulted the angels or whatever and it didn't work and he finally said okay Jenny I'm ready to talk to you so it was like a multi-dimensional second density energy that was creating an illness in him that he wasn't in right relationship with from another life, right? And so he's like, oh, that's genius or whatever. Wow, you know, thank you so much. So that night I was visited by his shadow. And I wasn't just visited. I was full on attack. And I was laying in my bed paralyzed by this energy that was very dark and sinister and it said you stay in your place little missy you do not know more than me so the next day in my naivete because i believed he believed in me i said dude your shadow came and visited me last night and it was not pretty and he was very angry with me in fact he went so far as to say I think you might be crazy, <gasps> honestly. And I said to him, do you not understand archetype and shadow archetype? If we are in a shadow archetype, that's where the term shadow comes from. Because I've never seen a person who was born with a shadow consciousness. It's when we engage in these shadow archetypes, or maybe we entangle, uh, you know, with a very, very dark, so complicated, there's no way. You know, there's people out there writing books that this is how you get entities and this is how this happens. And it only happens if this, that, and the other. There is no only on planet effing Earth. There is no only one way on true. planet Earth. Very so true. the first person that says absolutism, it is only this way. Next, next. 
So he basically, and so I had to finally block him on text. I just, I couldn't go through the exchange of him attacking me. And that night I said to my soul, I need to be done with this man. And I told him, we've had many lifetimes. You were the guru. I was the student. You were the number one. I was the number two. In so many lifetimes, I've tried to tell you, you're not quite right. You just need a little tweak. And it's all, and, and he would be constantly trying to destroy me. I was in the mentor mentee archetype with him. And that night after I blocked him, I went into the archetype to, to withdraw my consciousness from this program that I willingly as a soul chose to participate in. And he was the mentor. So here's the deal with the mentor mentee archetype, Danny, if you don't already know. If you excel or exceed beyond the level of your mentor, you must kill them. So they will do anything to make sure you fail because they want to be number one. It's that it's the archetype. It's the archetype. So I went in to the archetypal classroom. You can do it two ways. There's programming in your field. So like subconscious mind programming, right? Alpha, theta, brain wave going into the subconscious, pulling out the little programs or belief systems. Or I like to use the classroom earth uh, analogy. You know, you go onto the campus and you find the, the building that says mentor archetype, mentor mentee, right? So I go in and I find where my consciousness agreed to participate. And there were several people in the classroom. And there he was, large as life. In the back of the classroom, he was the professor. He was the mentor. And there were many people in this archetype with him. And I grabbed my stuff and I hightailed it out of there. Now, when you withdraw your consciousness from an archetype, some people would say transition out of that archetype into maybe another or just free yourself, please, from all archetypes. You, What you do is you transmute the emotions and judgment of all of the experiences so that you retain the wisdom. And you, as you're leaving, you're just integrating that wisdom into your soul. You're sharing it with your higher self over soul. You, you now have all that experience. You don't have to ever have that experience again because you peace out. I've tapped out. I've learned everything I can from this. Does, does, that, make, does that make sense to you? So I just... You, it's been a topic for me in the past year is letting go of this mentor and this belief that I needed that knowledge. And you really sort of highlighted that for me. It's good because what we're doing in real time is highlighting aspects within us. Again, confirming that we're all healing something. We're all finding the information on something that's been bothering, or maybe we've given it the chance to shine the light and bring it to the surface in all of us. You talked about the archetype and a lot of people don't always know what that means, but different aspects of self. You talked about second density, the shadow that visited you that was attached to that mentor that couldn't handle having a brighter student. And when we say in therapy, but in life too, if you are the brightest person in the room, find another room. Yeah. But a lot of people will stay because they're frightened to take that step. It can be scary, but that's the thing to do. That's how you keep moving, moving, moving. And you said about when you have an archetype like that, a shadow archetype like that, you kill it. Then you went in to say how you would either delete um, in your mind, the mental mind, imagine, imagination, take the programs out or go in, see a classroom, imagine it, use your imagination and take your stuff, withdraw. You know, you can do many different things with that thinking aspect. But yeah, you're right. You know, the abuse, the, if anyone is still saying, follow God, we are under one God, you know, God will judge you. Then I'm like, you're so 2000 years ago, you know, and there'll be people that will go, oh my God, she's a witch. Oh, her. oh my God, that is so 2000 years ago. Or that is so a hundred years ago. Uh, people are so stuck in the past programs. They do not know how to get out of them. They don't have the emotional intelligence. They haven't allowed themselves to say, maybe I'm wrong about that. Maybe I shouldn't be saying or spewing this. Maybe I'm in a wrong situation density-wise. Maybe I'm not this fifth density person I see myself as being in hopium and dreamland. Maybe I'm actually dancing between second and third 
in order to get me up to a higher vibratory resonance. You know, it's all. Yeah, thanks for sharing that. That was really, really important, especially as people are still on a spiritual journey. As someone says to me the other day that my channel is um, mind, body and soul. And, you know, I, I had to like sitting down on the naughty step and put them right. I'm like, yeah, if you're plugging into the 80s, 90s baloney, you know, we're not in the same century, mate. And we're not going to have a conversation, you know, spiritual as spiritual is, soul is as soul is. And we can wrap it into any little bow ribbon program we like. But again, doesn't matter what we've all been taught, trained and told this is the way to be. If you can't feel your own soul resonance, if you can't step and feel your own physical vessel and own that you chose to come into this vessel to experience whatever. And during that experience, you get to say no or yes, or stand up, be proud, be loving. But ultimately, we're all going to die, every single one of us, you know. We're all going to have a moment when the soul leaves the body to do a life review. There will be no God judging. There will be no angels judging. There will be no doors blocking. There will be no bloody Peter at the non-existent pearly gates. There will be no paying, blackmailing, bribing, raping, adrenochroming, whatever you want to call it, to get you into a certain level. No, none of that. None of that. Mm -hmm. Everything. We're the worst judges. We're the worst judges. Look at the pain we get into. We attack, we fight. What happens to us? It's like instant return energy. I don't like the word karma, but I choose not to use it. But to some people, that's what it is. It's it's like a reciprocal yeah, because if we hold that within ourselves or we generate that or we send that out, we then invite it. It's just a reciprocal action. Yeah, it's response to chaos. Can. Right, response to chaos, reaction, causation, I mean, expansion, constriction. Yeah, it's all the same, the same, the same loop, you know, that we're here to to remove ourselves from. Well, my darling, we have been going for um, over an hour here, over like an hour and 15, I think. And I think that it would be great to bring this current conversations to um, somewhat of a close until the next time we we come together. Um, what would you like to, it kind of a synopsis of what you feel you wanted to express to our beautiful audience today? Well, going back full circle to the beginning of the conversation where we were talking about the organic, authentic evolution of our souls in this physical body and all of ways that we are bombarded with frequency for whatever reason, assumably that, you know, to try to interfere with our evolution. I want to say that sometimes being in nature and being kind just isn't enough, you know, could we take the extra step to step away from those frequencies? Do a social media break for seven days. Turn off your Wi-Fi if you can, uh, you know, or do the absolute minimum. It's not enough just to go walk in nature a little bit, but what if you meditated in nature and you ground and you ask your higher self to call in those frequencies so that we truly can organically, authentically heal these physical vessels that people outside of us are trying to hijack, but they're ours and our frequency, our soul is what will transmute. It is what will foster the proper biological functioning of our body, the proper biological transformation of energies whether it's a fungus or a bacteria or a v word or what have you within us it's all consciousness and the deeper we go within our heart and the more deliberate we are to know ourself as aristotle said know thyself right that is where we all if we want to contribute to the evolution of humanity, where we all, and I rarely tell people what to do, but if you really want to evolve, focus on yourself, focus on, on your heart and heal that heart and call in that unadulterated golden light of creation, right? No matter what we've been affected by, no matter what we we drank and took into our body or we ate or or we were bombarded, it doesn't matter. 
We are the greatest technology that exists on earth right now. No matter what, there is no other. We are soul. We are a spark of the divine. And if we know our own frequency, then no one else can come in and try to give us messages or tell us what to do because they don't have our frequency. Know your own frequency. Try to step away. If it's just for one day, you know, I understand emergencies, you know, leave your phone in the car or whatever. Take a long walk, meditate, ask your higher self to help you remember the truth of who you are. The truth of who you are and why you are here as a bringer of light, a wisdom carrier. Those of us who came from the future, we carry wisdom and knowledge that has long been forgotten on this planet. So sorry if I went overboard on that. No, Ginny, stop. That's beautiful. You know, we also, you and I wanted to talk about uh, past lives and future lives and some of the things that Alex Collier has brought to consciousness of um, humanity. Um, so I want to invite people, if you would like, Ginny, to come back on in the next few days so we can have another conversation on that very subject that you just raised because uh, there isn't really time today. Um, and we want to give people a chance to think about some of the things that we've shared, um, should it be of value to them so they can you know assimilate that into their own beautiful vessels and just for me uh, to say Ginny love you so much so grateful to have you as a friend in my life but also bringing wisdom here and love and care for for our family watching so thank you Ginny I'll see you soon thank you Danny and to you guys out there, my beautiful audience, I say my beautiful audience, I just feel so blessed whenever I do a broadcast and there's this lovely live chat going on. I always feel so humbled and, and just so grateful um, uh, to the people that come and that feel and leave comments and feel like they get value, you know, from, from this. So feel free to subscribe guys. Um, and I want to say as well that, you know, as much as I say, anyone's still worshiping a God, it's so 2000 years ago. What I really do mean by that is much to me, the most beautiful energy on our planet, which some people call God is source is the creational source that we all came from as individual sparks of that. Of course, there is a beautiful essence, a creator source, a, source energy and you know for those of you that read the bible which again is so 2000 years ago but there's a lot of good stuff in the bible too um one of the best things i ever read or saw that means the most to me is the single sentence god is love and to me, that love vibration, that to me is it. That is where we came from and that is where we will return. And in between, wow, what a journey. <laughs> what a journey. So guys, thank you again for watching. My name is Danny Henderson. I've been having a beautiful chat as I'm sure you will agree with Ginny Jablonski. And uh, oh, Ginny, we meant to mention your, your beautiful Animal Communicator podcast. Please give us a quick rundown on that for people. So I have a podcast and it's called Interspecies Evolution. And I'm in the second season. And I just recently interviewed Dr. Jude Curavan from the UK. And Penelope Smith is coming up. Michelle Hollingbrooks, Dr. Amy Robbins, Dr. Mario Beauregard, uh, Dr. Paul Mills. Just incredible, amazing forward thinking minds, but also people who have been on a journey of remembering the truth of who we are. And I'm not trying to tell people what to believe or what to think, but to inspire people to go on a journey of awakening and of remembering. Because as we remember the sentience that we have choice, our own sovereignty of our soul, we can then begin to remember that animals carry that same sentience and that they are souls on a journey of evolution as well. Beautiful. And the name again of the podcast? Interspecies Evolution. Beautiful. Ginny Jablonski, you are a gift. Thank you so much. And to you guys out there, we are now finally wrapping this beautiful conversation. Thank you for being here. I send you my love and I'll see you soon. <laughs> oh my Lord, Ginny darling, I haven't paused yet because the little mousy mouse is playing up again. Okay. Doesn't, what doesn't want to move? Doesn't want to go on pause. 
So here we go. Oh, so close. Oh, so 